<laughs> so a lot of what I will talk about has been done more than once, so I will try to jump into my class to show some of the analytics that are actually available. So um, Launchpad doesn't sell itself totally as an LMS, but it definitely has all the tools you would need to be an LMS. And for those of us who cannot stand having to bounce back and forth, you can build all the tools you need into it. The deep integration is coming, and people who are required to use things, that's great. Um, I've been, I'm not going to read this to you, but just background, I've been involved with Launchpad before. With Launchpad, I've mentioned that the first day I'm involved when it was the Project X, but I've been doing online uh, since uh, 2002. And I've been with McMillan or whatever name of the PEC company with <laughs> Universe since the beginning. And I chose it for the tools. I didn't choose it even though initially the first textbook I chose was Astronomy Today. I picked for the pictures. Uh, when I went to go online, I picked it for the tools. This company has always had better tools. So I picked it for integration with something that of you would use, which is called Starry Night. Um, they have great integration with partners, as like you were showing. Um, so I've been involved a long time with people who have been here and been gone, and some of my dates are wrong. But why I'm saying this to you is that I've used Launchpad a lot. And so you may not have found some of the things that I've used, but it's partly because when you have the tool, you're determined to use the tool, you really dig in to find stuff. And I got involved with the development of it because the portal didn't do what I wanted. Um, and I'm also going to highlight this before I go on is we use Moodle on our campus. And uh, I was part of the group that actually chose Moodle, and I refused to move into it. Um, <laughs> student feedback, this is recent date things. They say it's much smoother than Moodle. These are students who have no other choice but to use Moodle in other classes, uh, whether they're online or not. Every class on our campus uses Moodle. And that's where grades are reported and everything. So students have lots of experience with Moodle, and they don't like it. Um, it's more interactive, and this one, more intuitive. So if you aren't already convinced, um, my students, I don't have a large sample size. I will apologize. I don't have huge classes. I work at community college. <laughs> and um, I have bigger classes than the face-to-face -face classes. I have 30 students in each section. Uh, I do some manipulation of that, but it's not important to you. So this is only a sample of 342 students. Um, but as you can see, I ask them this question. I help all students who complete my class take a survey, and they're asked to compare. How did you like Launchpad versus Moodle? So 72% choose better. You know, I have very few students who say worse. During the beta, this was not true, but now it is. Uh, and then I have people who don't care, you know. And there's some written comments, but these are everything I'm showing. Is, I use it a lot, and students like it. Um, and what I have to do faculty review, so one of my coworkers who is not in my department, I chose someone who is in, who is our retention counselor. So she's used Moodle extensively with students. She had these great things to say about the current version of Launchpad and the things you can do. She found all the tools we currently have. The analytics in current Launchpad were great compared to Moodle. So I know the analytics can be better. So you know, I have, of course, I've mentioned lots of enhancements I'd like to see. Um, so this is the kind of place where I worried is I was going to do this all dead, um, but I can jump into my class depending on what we need to do. I do use the front page, I think Paul was talking about this, as an announcement. For those of you who have other systems, the announcement is not great in here because you have to hand edit these weekly, but if you use parent-child classes, you can go to all your sections, if you never break the link, if you know what I mean, um, and I do my announcements here. I would love to have a real announcement section that's timed and all of that, but it works. It's not that much of a hassle. Uh, it does make me stay engaged with my class, and students, as many of you pointed out, you have to tell your students stuff multiple times. So you need to have in your LMS <laughs> multiple places to tell people stuff. So I use the announcements page. Um, my classes are laid out by week using the unit system in um, Launchpad. Uh, I rename everything. I keep none of the standard names. I move everything around. Launchpad is incredibly configurable and customizable. The problem is once you change, when you roll out something new, I have to do it all over again. Which but it is so customizable, so I can make it look like anything. It doesn't look like anything. When we were in Blackboard, <clears throat> I built an extensive, multi-complicated Blackboard thing. And when they went to move us to Moodle, they used my class as a test. And they said, well, classes like yours don't move to Moodle. But everyone else is good. <laughs> I said, well, thanks. <laughs> I'm part of the discussion, and you tell me, because I use so much, it's too complicated. 
Moodle couldn't handle it. Well, Launchpad has no trouble handling it, but it, as they told me then and it's still true now, it's all on me, which is fine. Uh, my layout, <clears throat> like uh, Paul has shown, <clears throat> very linear in Launchpad. So I have documents that they get information from, and they don't necessarily page through them because some of them have to open still um, because I got used to having them open things externally because the layout for me is extra work to go and stick it in. <laughs> Uh, but they march through this. I bring in lots of content from outside. Uh, in my discipline, in astronomy, we don't have lots of great videos that are curated by Macmillan, but that doesn't matter because there's so many great videos out there that they don't have rights to, but I do because they're out there on YouTube. So Crash Course, students love Crash Course. They used to love something else, but I just bring that in. And then I get to the ebook. So this is the part Macmillan's providing is ebook. And in there, there's interactives and so on. But the students see everything laid out just how I want them to. And my class is totally online. They move through at their own speed with the caveat that I control the due dates. And it's hard to see this in this dead class. And <clears throat> on the calendar, I'll be able to show it better. Um, but they move through this. This is in linear order. And the last thing they do is take a quiz. They do learning curves on every chapter. We only, in astronomy, we just have one per chapter. Um, there's act, I call them activities. There's digital uh, tutorials that they do, topic specific. And the discussion board, which I'd like to show, and I think that's why I'll go live, is to show you some of that. And then labs are offline. Um, and then they have a practice quiz, which is multiple times. And I give extra credit for some of you who said you want to motivate students. That extra credit thing really works. Because I used to make this required. Students would not do a practice quiz, even when it was required. <laughs> they lost points every week, but they refused to do it. Because they didn't want to practice. So I made it extra credit and um, increased the number of people who do it. And then the one time only quiz at the end. Um, so this calendar, some of you, I think I talked to someone, and I know there's problems because in big classes it doesn't work, um, but this calendar is a great center to actually do stuff. In my class, I don't have one due date. I have three each week. My class doesn't start on Monday. My start class starts on Wednesday. So every week, I roll out new content Wednesday morning. I come back from the coffee shop, it's about 7 a.m., I go in and I turn on the week update the announcements, and then they can get to work. They have from Wednesday until Sunday before the first due date. So all, it used to be students like to have the weekends to work because they all had family commitments and kids and all this other stuff. Traditional students, they all hate it because they all want everything due, you know, Friday at 12. But I have lots of non-traditional students for what we used to consider non-traditional. So this front-loaded thing is they can do these any day. This is just when it's due. And of course, you can track some of this when they do do it. Discussion has to be finished by the next day. And then the big hard things are all the last day of the week. And I use 11.59 PM. They get the whole day, all the time. And um, then we start over every week. And they can't, this is a philosophical thing as I'm doing a lot they can't work on next week until this week is over. They can't work ahead. We're a community yeah. moving together. And even though there's half the students will say they don't like it, the discussion doesn't work if you're not a community. And as a totally online class, there has to be some community building. Because I experimented early on with letting them move at their own rate, letting them do things completely independently. I, some things I tried to do interactively in groups. Uh, the biology group actually has collaborative labs that they do. Well, that's great. What I found was students didn't work together. The biology people, the same thing. Their student groups never work. They're constantly giving fake data to their student groups, but they still haven't broken the model because they really believe in it. So I'm hopeful they'll find a way someday, but I gave up on it early on because what I wanted was for them to get through the interactive experience of the lab. Um, now the great book, which I think Frank was showing, there's lots of great analytics in here already. Um, this one, especially the last login, and I always keep this in here so I can tell when they were in lot the last time. What I'd like to see <laughs> is more you know, data easier to mine, but if there's already great data here. It's already good, because um, this is t totally turned on. I've turned on like every field here. Um, so you can see how many total points they have, what their percentage is, what their grade is, how many minutes, and as we've highlighted, these big outliers are wrong, but the other ones are pretty good. Um, and then in every assignment, what I love, and this is what Stephanie was mentioning, is down here, each week I can actually see who's missing the assignment, my classes are smaller, it's not so hard, but I literally click on that button, I send an email. 
Everybody, every morning when they've missed an assignment, they get a reminder from me. Yeah, they have to read their email. That feature? What? I didn't know you could email from that feature. Yes, you can. I didn't know that either. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Um, it's, it's sort of a hidden feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you click on that assignment. Right, I can open a window. You can email them individually or email the group. Right, but what the great thing is is if you click on it in this field, it automatically adds all the people who are missing that assignment or get low scores to your email. Oh. So you don't have to do anything more. You just click on that field. All of them are populated. Then you can type. It's a low. It's a low tech, you know, email thing. You have to add your own uh, signature. Sure. <laughs> so I have text files I paste in there. Um, but it's already there, and this is in the current version. I mean, they're promising us more, but it, this is already there, and that's what Stephanie thought was so cool. That's also the reason I want to go to the – I'm going to go to my live class is I want to talk about the discussion board because there are things there that are cool. Um, this is just going to get closer to this. So there's lots of good ads here. Uh, and I think they actually export, but I don't do that. I know when you export this, you can choose. I think you can ex export the time. And so if you were wanting to do an analysis like someone said they did by hand, I think you can output that to a spreadsheet and actually sort that and do the analytics even now. And it would be great if we have more tools. This was my idea. Oh, I'll make a cool I'll expand. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> some of the, the pre political assignments I'm just going to skip through because I use learning curve. I use tutorials. <laughs> These are built in things. The non customized assignments, this is, you know, I don't want to complain, but I've never understood why this list isn't even alphabetical, you know. <laughs> but there are all the tools you need to make an online class. The discussion board is assigned, but these are all like things you put in to lecture or lab. I and mean, if you have your own videos, there, there are all these implementation tools. With HTML, you can actually put in these cool things. And then they've got the actual assignment things. I don't use this one because of um, <clears throat> it's been added recently. Um, but when I first started this, not that you care, but the first version of the uh, launchpad I used had no Dropbox. Pepper actually had to write one for me with, like, in the first month because I had students emailing me assignments, which is crazy making. Um, so I tell students they can't do that. So there's great tools already here. The discussion board is hardly used, I've been told, so I'm going to switch over to my uh, semi-live class, which is a dead class. Go back to the so again, in my linear structure, which I'm sure is no longer intuitive to be obvious, um, <clears throat> hi, first of all, as I've mentioned to a few people, I have my kludgy workarounds. So, and I, I'm the only one with a picture. <laughs> if you use Launchpad, if you ever bother using the section board, you will never find a way to put this in. But I was in early, and so uh, when I was in Brain Honey one day, I put my picture in, and they never took it out. Uh, so my students can see me, and uh, I guess they think I'm nice because I do smile in this photo. But what I want to highlight is, yes, we have a discussion board. It is not the same as probably in your LMSs, but it does work, and it will be useful. It is glitchy, not glitchy. It is limited because it is yet to be updated. And I'm presenting now because I'd like to encourage you to use it so that they update it, because it could be really useful to you instead of bouncing back and forth. Um, so up here you'll notice this. My class is not X-rated, but <laughs> I really have this control problem. I don't want students to just go off on their own tangents in my discussion. This is me controlling their content. I want them to talk about these things. It's not real rigorous content, but I want them to talk about what I want to talk about and then flow in a conversation. So, you know, <clears throat> community and getting them going. I start with so many interesting things. So. They took away the ability when they modified <laughs> Brain Honey for me to disable this start new thread. So I um, 
use a <laughs> overlap display field to block them touching it. So they can't hit on new threads. No, they can't hit on new threads. <laughs> but it's not a feature. It's, if you go into the, the top up here and edit this, you can put in some HTML that overlaps the field below. And by a little messing around and guesswork, <laughs> I finally covered this up. Um, so even though I think the support people are really great, if, you, if they don't want to help you, they, but they won't stop you. Um, <laughs> so this is my workaround. Um, now, in each of my things, the discussion display, the students, this is the biggest complaint, the reason why I'm spending your time on it, is the students can use the discussion, we do fine with it, but this is where they complain the most because I force them to stay here because it's, if they jump out, they won't come back. Um, but this is the least improved and it's the only part that they prefer in Moodle because the discussion there is not only can they control a lot more, but they have more colors and everything divides better. This, for whatever reason, never scales to basically the screen size you have. It always stays in this narrow field in here, and it never shows all the text. Uh, it still works great, and it, it's better. It's better than Blackboard and other things, but it could be better. Welcome um, to Moodle. It's so much easier to grade discussion. And that's what I was going to say. This is so easy to grade. Yeah. Um, if I can figure out how to open one, my, I can sit here. So. And this is what Stephanie really liked. I don't think this is a, oh, sorry. It's not a violation of this person's purpose but to, to show uh, this analytic that's available. So someone talked about someplace um, having trouble with these fields. So these are basically open response. And I don't grade, I grade based on number of posts per week. But since that's kind of like, oh, what did they just put two characters in? Well, I don't have to go through and read the entire thing and sometimes, by the end of the quarter, I've stopped reading the discussion. It's for them. I start them, and I put extra prompts in. I'm in there encouraging them, but in a sort of a generic way. It's like, oh, this discussion thing was, like, in this week, it's about, did we really land on the moon in 1969? The students post back and forth different things, and I post resources and get them to engage. But I don't, even though I only have 30 students, it's a lot to read, hundreds and hundreds of words. I require four posts a week to try to build this community. Well, I can go right here when I go to grade, and you can access from the grade book as well. It tells you number of posts, <clears throat> the number, the, the group participation is something I don't use. That tells you the average word per post and a time spent. So I can choose which analytic to use, even though I know the time spent is not as accurate, the number of words posted is. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I can say, oh, you're above what I expected. I needed a minimum of four posts, but if you have only a 34 word average or whatever number I'm currently using. Currently, I'm still thinking 50 words is a good average. You know, you, you're engaged. You probably wrote a couple sentences someplace. Uh, when I have students who've only, you know, posted 15 words, but they tend to also not post enough. So I can easily ding them. But it's intervention time. If you posted five times and you have an average of 12 words, well, then I know I need to read all your posts. And I need to send you a separate email that says, you didn't get any score this week because your posts were invalid. And so I can do that in addition to reading normally. Now, if I have plenty of time, which I don't always do, in the first two weeks, I read everything. I'm very, very interactive to get them going. I've spurred them all along, and then I back up. And by the third quarter of my class, sometimes I don't even go back in and read their stuff at all because they're so engaged. You know, but the class is also shrunk in size. So there's some great analytics already in here. And like I said, the people who use Moodle, they were just, I don't want to say what I was just about thinking, but they love this. <laughs> they really would, they would have jumped in for this aspect of Launchpad alone. Even in what I know has been the least developed portion of Launchpad, this analytic was so powerful to them because discussions are so hard to grade. And it's so hard to get students to do stuff if you don't grade it, you know. So... But I think there, and there's lots of suggestions students have about what we could do. If we go back to my presentation, I have a few other comments we'll jump through. Yes. So I won't talk about the other, <coughs> the other assignment things. The Dropbox work great. We've had lots of people talk about the quizzes. Um, so in the end, I came, I told my dean, so I could try to impress upon the developers and people in general about things I think have improved. Most of it's already been said over and over. Quizzes, I'd like to be able to delete quizzes from my test bank because right now I've written quizzes. 
or quiz banks or whatever you want to call them, unintentionally, accidentally, and I keep copying stuff, well, I get this junk in there from years ago. I can't delete them at all. They're still there. I can work around it, but I can't get rid of it. Uh, it'd be nice to clean that up. This is the one. I would actually write you a check. <laughs> if you can make it easier for me to get my quizzes out of 10E into 11E. So when we go to Universe 11E, which I could be as early as a year from now, if I have to re-import all this stuff, I think I might go back to lecturing in a classroom, you know, because <laughs> I've had to do it multiple times. And, um, and I'm at home screaming and cursing, um, but it does, it's really actually not as bad as I'm making it sound. But you know that it could just be click import like they have in launch, like they have right now in, Google, in Moodle. Oh, they just imported the entire class. You never have to do it twice. Um, and this is really, this was totally stupid, but I'm saying it anyway. I want total control of how many points I assign. Uh, I will accept rational as the only limitation. Irrational numbers, maybe I can't have, but I should be able to put decimal values or open invest. I should be able to give a 10,000 point quiz if I wanted to. And Launchpad, you're limited to 100. Um, it's maybe creative, but um, this is no. The great book, the only thing, and it's been highlighted so many times, is I'd love to have the timers be accurate. It's still great that we have them. And so I can use them. I can use them to give ranges, but I'd like to be able to be able to say for every single student and be able to then create more analytics saying, oh, the students who spent this many minutes did this, as opposed to say, oh, you didn't spend very much time. The students who aren't engaged, the, the timers are pretty accurate. <laughs> uh, students, and I did get this from my survey, I do do a survey at the end of every quarter. Every student who completes my class has the opportunity for the survey. About 95 to 98% of them do it because I give points. In my discussion grade, I give you points for clicking into the Survey Monkey. So you get points automatically in the discussion if you click into it. So I get a great response. Because I, my campus, I'm a totally online class. The traditional mechanism for giving uh, feedback is they have the department secretary send the students a link to an online survey. And I get 15 to 20 percent of my students who participate. It's horrible. So my dean's got all over me. You know, all of a sudden I had require, extra requirements. You have to have more surveys. It's like, oh, okay. So they, they can't really fire me, but it does become annoying. So I started my own surveys in SurveyMonkey and do them every time. And my dean this time, she just loved it. She had no complaints. She didn't care how low my percentages were on the official one anymore. So I asked my own questions. Students, number one thing they'd like to see improved, mobile devices, no one's surprised. I mentioned this in many workshops I've been in. E-book is the biggest thing they'd like to see mobile. Um, that's the thing that they, in my class. So what I didn't give you is, so I don't lecture at all. I don't have videos of me lecturing. I don't even have videos that are considered lectures. I just have resources. The book really is what they're reading to learn from. It's a read the book, take a quiz style class in some sense. Students, students complain about that, but not really, because the book is actually really engaging. It's really interesting, and they mostly love the class. Uh, and I don't videotape myself. We have facilities on campus, but I find there's much more engaging and much more charismatic people online, and I can keep changing it up. And they'll never notice that I'm wearing a big collar or a small collar or that I've gotten a lot grayer. Um, the discussion board is absolutely the thing they complain about the most. So I've been collecting. <laughs> and I have data. It's in my survey monkey. Uh, and I actually wrote, because I'm guilty of this, I believe in March I wrote a two- or three-page long ticket <laughs> about the discussion board, including stats for my students, saying what they wanted. This is the order. I actually have eight to ten things I ask them about. This is their order of preference. This is their preferential order of what needs to be fixed. They want to see it more clearly separated. The last thing is what I want the most, but I have three more things. For those of you who have never used the discussion board, I won't bore you with showing you how it works, but it is the most limited editor in all of Launchpad. It has no HTML. So I have figured a way to put embedded video in there. I have a trick, and if I improve the trick, originally what I would do is I'd go back to the portal where you could put in video because you could add HTML context, and in the display without the HTML, you could do a copy. And in Chrome, you can paste that in, and Chrome interfaces with the editor better, and it then 
embeds the HTML into it and lets you embed the video. It won't work in Firefox, and I don't use anything else. I tried, I refused to use IE and, and Safari, it didn't work. Um, so that's my workaround. And then I found I can do this using the HTML page in Launchpad. So now I embed my videos into an HTML page in Launchpad, display them, use a copy, go into Chrome and paste them. Students can't do this though, and they are crazed by it. They can't put their cat videos <laughs> into my discussion boards. But I can, and the new video tool it may have been a workaround if I'd gotten it initially, but I really like the videos in the discussion because students react to the video and I can use different kinds of video. So I mean, the, the new video tool is a discussion board? It sort of is, but the, what I don't like about it is it's not embedded where they're already doing discussion. Yeah. So it's a bounce out kind of thing. So I thought I would change my class and use it, but I find that I'm just <laughs> still sticking to what I'm doing because students I mean, like it. It does give you the ability to grade on the number of comments made. In other right. words, you could oh, say, oh, you need to make at least three comments, that's and that's when you've reached your... And that's, that's a compliment I have. I really like the video tool. It's just that because I decided long ago, back when I was in Blackboard, that video was part of my discussion, because I wanted the, mm -hmm. the style of student learning. I wanted to have all styles in there, mm -hmm. and video learning was a big element to me. So I wanted to have them, for students who choose video learning, I wanted them to be able to get that in their discussion and to share. Um, and making it a separate thing would mean I'd have to create a new content type and so on. And so even though I liked the way it was done and I explored with it, and the fact that you could actually put video into it, um, I haven't switched over to it. And students have it, you know, they don't know about it, so they don't know yet that they'd like it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that was all I had to say. And going last, it was also the worst, but I thank you for your time. <laughs>